Hello again, I am Cheryl P. Johnson, Chief Executive Officer for COTS. Have you been doing your homework around narrative? So just so we can remain grounded in uh, this conversation that we've been having about narrative, um, remember our definition is the narrative is the story that we tell ourselves about the world just to make sense of it. And I love giving um, examples just as a reminder. So um, you are walking down the street, you live in a community, and you see Mr. Jones um, walking down the street, and Mr. Jones is stumbling as he is walking. You look at Mr. Jones, you don't know why he is stumbling, but you, you, you make up your own story about Mr. Jones and you say that Mr. Jones is intoxicated. There's no facts, facts, no um, knowledge of this, but that's your assumption just so you can make sense of why he is stumbling. And this is how narratives, especially harmful ones, are spread throughout our community and our world. So you go home and you actually say, I saw Mr. Jones stumbling down the street. Mom, he was so drunk. He was so intoxicated. Mr. Jones might have been having a physical challenge. Anything else could have been happening in his life, but you created a narrative about him, which then begins to um, spread throughout a community. Pretty soon, Mr. Jones is now the, the community drunk. Right, And so those are how harmful narratives are spread. And it just simply sometimes come will come from us thinking a certain way so that we can make sense of it. So last time I gave you some homework and I want to go over a, a couple of things just to remind us uh, what we were talking about. We were sharing about who we are actually shapes or contributes to our own narrative. So remember, we looked at three different buckets. We talked about personality, your the elements of your personality. And I'm going to share, uh, I went home and I did my homework, so I'm going to share uh, some of my um, uh, identities with you just to help you um, understand what we're talking about. We also talked about the social identity. Your, your race, your ethnicity, your age, all those things. And then the social and political context that con that's connected to your story. So let me share mine. So this was my homework I did. I, I listed some of my uh, personality um, traits. I am patient. Yes, I really am. I am one of the most patient people in the world. Believe that. I, I feel that I am self-aware. I am athletic. I, sp I played sports in high school. I played in college. I love sports and I try to keep pretty um, active. So I'm athletic. Playful and humorous. Don't tell me a good joke. I love humor. I love having fun with folk. And believe it or not, uh, most people would think I am an extrovert. I actually feel very comfortable being an introvert. I think I have to just show up in the world a certain way, uh, just by nature of my, my work and my job. But I am a very comfortable introvert. And then I am caring and thoughtful. So those are, you know, my um, attributes or my uh, elements of my personality. Now, if you notice, I actually gave you a whole bunch of positive things. I'm sure there are other uh, uh, identities connected to my personality that uh, would make you laugh. So the other bucket that we also talked about was social identities. I'm African-American. I'm female. I'm in my 60s. I live in an urban community, Detroit. 
I'm college educated. Um, I have a, a religious affiliation as a Christian. I am single and I am employed. All of those things matter. And it impacts the way you see the world. And then the last bucket that we talked about was your social and com uh, political context that's connected to your story. So this is the first time in my history where we have all of these different buckets of uh, generations. We have the Gen X, we have millennials, we have baby boomers, we have Gen Z. All of that matters. And then we have all of the social laws that have, have come into play over the years um, around health care, around marriage, pro-life, pro-choice, the polarization of the world, and then a, a focus on uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice. All of those things impact how I see the world. And the same thing goes for you. So here are some reflective questions that I want you to think about as you put the uh, kind of fill in the blank, if you will, for those three buckets. How has your narrative identity shape the way you think about poverty. So keep in mind, we've been talking about narrative, but narratives around people in poverty. How has your narrative identity shaped the way you think about poverty? Then two, how has your narrative identity shaped how you think about paternalism and fatalism? And you will remember we gave kind of those definitions, paternalism, you know, how we think about people in poverty, um, believing that we have to take care of them because they can't take care of themselves, right? And then fatalism, you know, it's just going to be that way. There's nothing we can do about it. So think about how your narrative identity has shaped how you think about paternalism and fatalism. And then the last question I want you to consider is how do we challenge the harmful narratives that are products of our environment? Now, some of this really requires some soul searching, but I, I hope that you will take some moments just to be vulnerable and honest um, with yourself. And as we close out this series around narratives, I want you to uh, go away with, with some takeaways. Here's one. We all hold, all of us, me, you, we hold harmful narratives, even those who are aware and work daily to shift them. Let's be honest. We hold these harmful narratives. And then two, we are all products of our environment. We bring narratives, sometimes harmful, with us everywhere we go. Thirdly, be aware of harmful narratives. Being aware is the first step towards new and better possibilities. So here's what I want you to do. Give yourself some grace. Perfection is impossible. The, the unlearning and relearning is part of uh, the journey. So the more vulnerable and honest we are about our narratives and biases, the better we'll be able to do this work together to make a better and more peaceful world. And as my dear colleague and friend Paige Blessman always ends any kind of dialogue with me, she says, peace, peace to you.